What's up, college baseball fans? Welcome to another episode of the 11.7 podcast, where we are here to recap weekend number four of the college baseball season. We'll also preview the midweek here at the end of the episode. Some really good midweek matchups coming up, uh, a lot of upset potential. But uh, we just want to say thank you to our official partners at Homefield Apparel. You know, this, this week, we're going to choose another team of the week. And it was, I mean, it's kind of a no brainer. It's, it's the Kansas Jayhawks. So you guys go to homefieldapparel.com, use our promo code CWS24 to get 15% off your first order there. And uh, guys, look at this heat that they have for Kansas. I know it's March, March Madness, Kansas basketball, everybody thinks, but Kansas is turning into a baseball school. They win two out of three against TCU, uh, break up TCU's undefeated season. Uh, and, I mean, look at this stuff. Just so many cool basketball retro jerseys. Um, this one up here at the top I forgot to mention. We got the vintage shooting shirts from 1997. Uh, they got three full pages of Kansas Jayhawk gear, and they have it for over 200 schools. So y'all go check it out. You don't have to use it for Kansas, uh, but you can use it for your favorite school too. So um, anyways, we're back. It is a flu game for myself, a stomach bug game for Dimitri, and Jack's on the road in Washington, D.C., called a little college basketball this weekend. Uh, boys, we made it through the weekend, but it was tough. How's everybody feeling? We made it. We made it. We made it. Tough time don't break you. Tough time build you. Oh, 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 oh. yo, someone clip that. Bang, bang. <laughs> yeah, um, but I tweeted it out from the 11.7 account on, uh, I guess it was Saturday night. We put out very few coverage on Saturday. Uh, and, you know, we take pride in our Twitter coverage, something we like to do every week. Uh, we actually enjoy doing it, but we didn't do much. And uh, But I got hit with the flu Friday night. It was as I was... Uh, listening to the Hawaii baseball game against Rice, had Rice money line and ended up hitting Parker Smith, one of the only true aces, like one of few true aces in college baseball where he just makes his team that much better. Um, but, I mean, I have a two-year-old son. Well, actually, he turns two on Wednesday this week. And, uh, yeah, and, you know, when they go to daycare, kids, they start bringing home viruses and yeah, just so many things. And, yeah, dude, I – I had 102 fever all day Saturday, didn't get out of bed, slept 14 hours overnight from Saturday to Sunday. Uh, it was it was the first time I took NyQuil in probably, I, maybe ever. And Sorry dude, I'll God. tell you what, dude, NyQuil dreams are unreal. I was having the craziest dreams all last night. They were super vivid, huh? Oh, dude, were super vivid. What? Are they positive? Was what positive? Like, were they positive dreams? Like, sometimes you have oh, nightmares. Yeah. I mean, I guess in one of my dreams, there was a bear. He was wearing a GoPro on his head, and he was holding a carton of silk milk. You know what I'm talking about? Like, the silk oh, brand milk. milk? Yeah, the almond milk. Dude, it was the weirdest dream ever. And he was just walking around the backyard. I, I was flabbergasted, I guess, to say the least. But, yeah, NyQuil's... Uh, it's a hell of a drug. I started feeling a little bit better today and uh, still a little sick. You can probably hear it in my voice, but we're going to battle through, get the people what they want, a little college baseball recap. Uh, I watched a ton of baseball. I had multiple screens going all weekend, but just couldn't couldn't find the uh, energy to pick up the phone and start tweeting about it. So apologies from the 11.7 guys. I love it, Ben. To your point, to mental toughness on Dimitri's end, gritty behavior on your end. First off, happy birthday to little man. We're gonna have to work something out on Wednesday. Uh, but I've got a question for the people. I was thinking about this. She sent the tweet out. I'm in crossover season. Last week in a basketball coverage on my end. Hand down, man down on my end. Got to help pick the boys up when the boys fall in soldier. Do we want to start pushing some of that content on Instagram? I'm so curious. Like of all of our followers, like. Would they care to listen to it? Big, like, are you talking about podcast yeah. or like highlight clip? 
Just the highlight clips. I think we're doing the podcast clips, but the highlight clips, if we started pushing that on Instagram, I'd be curious like to see if our your followers would, would be curious. Of the I got to help pick it up a little bit for the boys. And some of the big moments I think are perfectly fine to go on um, the yep. gram. Yeah. Look, I, I've never been a huge Instagram guy just personally, but yeah, it's it's definitely a, uh, a social media platform that I think there might be people on Instagram that aren't on Twitter. Or it might just be organized better on Instagram. I'm not really sure. But, yeah, I mean, we'll listen to the fans. If you think we should do more Instagram stuff, just comment in the on the YouTube. but um, or, or send us a tweet. Send us a text if you got our numbers. Uh, yeah, but I always like That'll Twitter. Be because it, yeah, I always like Twitter, though, because it feels like at an office workplace, like the water cooler kind of thing. Like Everybody's around chatting it up. You can reply to and from. Uh, I just think it's the best when it comes to like social media, but it is what it is. Yeah. I think you're spot yeah. on. And, and you can like, I mean, I know on Instagram, like when you go in the, com- in the comments or the tweet, you can see conversations. The Instagram, you can do that too, but you have to like click view more and view yeah. more and view more. And it's hard to just keep up with whatever conversation is going on. Yeah. Uh, anyways, guys, I got a lot of bullet points to talk about here and we can fly through some of them. Uh, but let's start here with two undefeated teams remaining and two that I don't think very many people would have picked to start the season, the Texas A&M Aggies and the Florida State Seminoles, both teams coming off of disappointing seasons last season, right? Um, you know, the, both really good programs, top to bottom, going through coaching changes and things over the last three years or so. But, I mean... Wow. Florida State, Texas A&M. Texas A&M won a thriller today against Rhode Island. They, they were down 11-7 to seven in the seventh inning and just kind of chipped away at that lead, chipped away at it, tied it up bottom nine, and ended up winning it uh, in extras. But, I, listen, I know that there's going to be people that are like, oh, Florida State and Texas A&M didn't play a tough schedule so far. It's still tough to win 16 straight games, though. It doesn't add, matter. Who so like, so like what you just said, they had to win overtime or thriller. Oh my God. I almost said overtime points and overtime. What the hell? Is <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I stopped myself there. I stopped myself there. By the way, points got shot into the garbage can. It'll never be back on this podcast. <laughs> anyway, when somebody, a team, like for example, Texas a and and Rhode Island, they had to win a, Crazy game, come back and win it. They're still undefeated. Florida or LSU, for example, loses the game to uh, Stony Brook. So, yeah, they're not playing tough competition, but to stay undefeated in the sport of baseball is so damn hard to do. Like, you run into a pitcher that's been an unbelievable slider that day. He goes three inning. Next thing you know, a guy hits a blooper, and they score two runs, and you lose the ball game. That's, just, it is, that's why baseball is 162 games in the big league, 56 games in college. Like, Baseball is a sport where 12 games is not enough. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, look, we're going to figure out real quick, you know, which which of these two teams is better. I personally think a and is a better team than Florida State. Uh, but they both play the Florida Gators this week. Uh, Florida State plays a midweek uh, against Florida. And then Texas A&M has three on the weekend. So the Florida Gators, the team that has all the star power in the world, just really hasn't put it together yet. Uh, gets a chance to knock off two undefeated teams this week, which is uh, which is exciting. But the uh, man, the main storyline is it's good to see both of these teams back uh, where I think they need to be. You know, top of the top of the charts. I don't really know where they're going to be ranked coming up this next uh, D one baseball ranking, but I mean, it's crazy to me that Florida State's like hasn't been ranked this year because they've been beating the shit out of teams, dude. Like they have been crushing teams so they should break into the top 25 um but yeah i just wanted to bring up that storyline here first the real main storyline is we got to see duke versus wake forest this weekend and it was a treat now it wasn't always the best baseball but both of these teams have legitimate star power that i mean 275 teams would beg for just one of these guys right um the uh you know, Duke ended up winning the series. They, they won on Friday, and then they ended up winning today on, on Sunday. And 
I think my main takeaway is one, like Duke has some arms out of the bullpen, right? Like Duke, I think Duke's been kind of overlooked in a way. Maybe over, overlooked isn't the right word. Maybe but, by some people, but not, but not this guy. But anyways, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, like, I guess, okay, the best way I can put it, we know the names of a lot of the top team's bullpen arms or, yeah. uh, you know, the top player. There's not a lot of guys on Duke's roster that, like, is, is a household name. Does that make sense? But these guys rake. They throw hard. Uh, and Chris Pollard and the boys, I mean, they went into a Wake Forest atmosphere, which Wake – Not that great. It's not a great atmosphere, but Wake just doesn't lose home games. Like, they know how to play in that small ballpark of theirs. And uh, listen, I think Duke deserves to be ranked number one coming up this next week. I, I know they're not going to be, but they have a resume that I don't think anybody else has. And uh, that's kind of my takeaway. But Jack hasn't got to talk too much. So, Jack, what was kind of your takeaway this weekend while I mute my mic so I can cough? <laughs> if there was college game day for college baseball, it would have no question been in Winston-Salem last weekend. Um, ben, you know what's so funny? I keep thinking about that. As I did my prep on Duke doing that game a couple weeks ago, you you talk about Franco Shell, who played for Team USA last summer. You talk about James Town, who's an All-American, right? Like these guys that are dogs. But you're like, wait, they got a couple All-American arms? Like you, I don't. That's not their mo, right? We know Santucci on Friday night's been fantastic. The guy that has absolutely turned heads, Charlie Bielinson is a Brown transfer. He's their closer. He's now got seven on the season. Now that helps when your team's winning a lot of baseball games. But it's also sure they his name's Charlie Bielinson. He's got seven yeah. saves on the season, number one of the country. He broke Duke's single season appearance record last year and their saves record last year. And no one talks about it. This dude let it hang in the ninth inning today. Did it on Friday night. But today, in a back-and-forth affair, the ball gets stuck in the twilight lights. It's a leadoff triple for Wake. And you're like, oh, here come the Demon Deacons in a 10-8 game. They get a leadoff triple. They're going to blow it. Bielinson walks a guy, first and third, nobody out. Punchy, punchy, and he's fine. And you're like, wait a second, this guy's gross. And that Ivy League pipeline that we've talked about, to Duke and, and Ben Miller at third, Logan Bravo at first. They've got a left and right tackle playing quarter infield at 6'4", 255, respectively. But Ben, to your point, their pitching is the real deal. Pollard gets thrown out in that game today to fire up the boys a little bit in what was kind of a sloppy game. But nobody has gone and played the out-of-conference like Duke has. And then with the ACC schedule coming early, nobody has taken on the number one team in the country like they have and done it in their building. Um and, and Demetri, to your point, I was there for that regional for Wake last year. When it gets warmer, I think you start to see that place kind of a little bit more alive. It was freezing there. And Duke it said, so I don't care. When you it was freezing. It was rainy. It was terrible. And Duke's dugout was going bonkers all weekend. Now, I know this kind of sounds like we're all over the Blue Devils because – Chase Burns was Chase Burns on Saturday. Like watching him like shoot the like fake imaginary AK-47 on the mound was like enough to make you run through a wall and they're going to be fine. But I think this more said so about Duke, like, okay, cool. Like they are, they are for real. Like buckle up. They're the real deal. Mm -hmm. By the way, you brought up Chase, Chase Burns celebration. When he does that, I don't see anybody else doing that. It's like, <laughs> like, <they're, laughs> like, uh, like uh, in Slugfest when they're about to catch fire. They sit in there and they start yes. shaking and, they, and they're like, Ooh. that's what he does. And I love it. I don't see anybody else doing that. Um, but, yo, Charlie, ba ba uh, how do you say, Balenson? Balenson. 14 innings, three walk, 22K. That'll play. Seven <laughs> yeah. save. Seven save in uh, 15, their first 15 games. Dude's going to be a 20 games. He's going to close 20 games off this year. Easy. Yeah. You know, what's, you know what's like another storyline that we haven't really talked about much, but you're starting to see – Jack, you kind of hit on it. You're starting to see a lot of Ivy League transfers playing at these big-time schools, right? Um, I looked into it a little bit, and I could be off a tad, but when you go play at an Ivy League school, there is no graduate program. Like, you can't play a fifth year in an Ivy League school. So um, guys like Ben Miller that, you know, is playing a huge role for Duke, uh, you know, he's, and, and I think Texas A&M has two or three Penn guys and Ivy League guys. Uh, 
I guess to kind of simplify it for the listeners, after they get done playing their four years, or not even playing, but spending four years at an Ivy League school, they can't come back for a fifth year. So that COVID year in 2020, which we're seeing a lot of, um, and I don't even think the Ivy League played in 2021. So yep. that's yep. that's why you're seeing a lot of good baseball players playing in the ACC, SEC, Big 12 um, after they get done playing. And Duke being a school that uh, has you know high academics, these smart kids are able to go transfer to the Dukes of the world and, and work on a graduate program. So that's pretty cool to me. And think about it, I want to almost bookend a little bit for, for those who like may or may not know casuals, whatever. When you think about who kind of did it first, look at what Wake Forest did last year. Cole Rowland was their back-end guy who flipped the ball and was looks like he'd taken enough C4 to kill a rhino last year in Omaha. He was a Dartmouth guy. He didn't play baseball for two whole years, showed up at Wake, did his thing last year. And then when you look at the other end of it, Yes, these guys are going to those Ivy League schools. A lot of them are really talented. They're going to get the degree, right? So in four years, they're not going to go transfer to chase the portal money. Like they want that degree. So there's not going to be a lot of them that get that fifth year. But because you mentioned that COVID year, like one of the last names that you guys should all know, Wyatt Hensler at Penn just broke the Ivy League home run record. He's going AM next year. So it's like the cat's out of the bag. Like they all know that this is an awesome little deal. You're going to see Hensler is going to be a borderline like 10th, 11th rounder. So would he rather go play at Bluebell Park next year? But it is a really fun little game that, that I think a lot of power fives have taken advantage of in the last couple of years. What if you, yeah. what if players started doing that? Go to Ivy League, red shirt, get your four years of school there, graduate, and then go play. Your, if you're not a draft guy, go to a SEC, ACC school with Ivy League degree in your back pocket, and then you get to go play big boy ball for a year. And maybe make a little bit of money and play two years of pro ball and then go back to your, go back to work. Go to the yeah, Ivy League I mean, shirt, do your thing, or graduate in three. But I don't think it's very easy to graduate in three years at the Ivy League. Yeah. I mean, listen, for anybody out there, if you can go to the Ivy League, like go to an Ivy League school. There's so many, unless you're like a cream in the crop high school prospect, if you can get into an Ivy League school, just go. Like there's so there's, many more opportunities I, I actually get done playing. I don't know about that. I turned it down and it's hard. It's, it is a hard, like coming from the South, it is really hard to come to turn and, and accept playing at Ivy League school. For me, it was difficult because I wasn't, I was, of course, I was cared about my academic going to school, you know, whatever. But I was like, I'm going to play baseball. So baseball is going to play a big role in where I go. And Ivy League just wasn't cut out for me. I was just like, it just didn't feel like they cared about baseball as much as I wanted them to. Well, Dimitri, you and I went to the Ivy League of the South, the Mercer University Bears. I want everybody to know how established and pristine Mercer is. Um, and it is we're gonna Ivy. Pivot. No, I know, but we're going to pivot off of Ivy League and go into uh, why Jack just had to leave. He's been waiting for over like maybe an hour for his Panda Express to finally come. Uh, he's in Washington, D.C. right now visiting his girlfriend, and uh, he's been so hungry. Like we've had to push back the, the podcast episode. Uh, his looks like his Panda Express finally got there. So uh, he said he's not going to eat on camera. He's going to go put it up, uh, eat it later after the podcast. But he was that's all he could talk about was just eating his his orange chicken and whatever. Uh, no no free sponsor. Fried rice and an egg roll. You'll be golden. Yeah, dude. Um, but yeah, no free sponsors. But if Panda Express wants to sponsor us, that's awesome. Uh, Dimitri, who's your number one team right now? That was the next segment I have. I just went on record. I said Duke right now, power ranking. They deserve to be number one. But who do you have? I think there's four teams that you can consider to be number one. I want to say Oregon State, but the head-to-head -head over Arkansas, if we're doing a power ranking style, it would be Duke, Arkansas, Oregon State. would probably be my top three. Yeah. Thank you. I think – so the thing with me is like who would win in a series between Arkansas or Arkansas and Oregon State? I think Oregon State. I think they would outhit them. I don't know. I mean, I love Arkansas's pitching, and their hitting has gotten better. Peyton Stovall finally comes back in the lineup, goes off this weekend. Um, he's coming back from injury. I mean, A and M, A and M could be, but if we're doing power ranking, you got to take it in consideration who they play. But. Right. I mean, I mean, it could go, it could go Arkansas, Oregon State, Duke, A and M. It can go Duke, 
Oregon, Arkansas, Oregon State, A and M. It, it, like there's so many. I mean, Wake Forest could be fifth. Like there's just so many combinations depending on how you want to do it. But my number one team right now, dude, I love Oregon State. I think they're the best team in the country. But it would, it, I would, I would do. I mean, Oregon State my number one team. But if we're gonna do power rankings now, Duke or Arkansas could be number one. Yeah. I, it's it's like it's such it's such a mess right now. Um, as Jack comes back, we just had to uh, tell the listeners that you went and finally got your Panda Express that you've been waiting for. Uh, oh, we can't hear you. Your, yeah, your yeah. mic is Rookie mistake. Rookie mistake. Rookie mistake. I should have known better. I've been doing this for far too long, but there was no time to even say goodbye to you folks at home. I spent $48 on Uber Eats Panda Express, and I've never been more excited on a more irresponsible financial per, uh, purchase in my entire life. I'm going to destroy it after this. Yeah, we told we told everybody. We were like, yeah, Jack Jack's Panda Express finally came. He's been so excited. Uh, but who's your number one team in the country right now? Uh, I, I I think I test, like we kind of joked about and I tweeted about last night, Duke. I, I really think it's Duke. Um, I think it's crazy that Florida State's not ranked third. <laughs> Football fans and, and fans in Tallahassee are probably really furious about being undefeated and still not getting a lot of love. So I'd like to put them in the top 25. Um, number one team in the country, though, I was going to, I would have told you LSU until about four and a half hours ago. Uh, I, I think it kind of hurts their case losing Xavier. I'm not worried about it, but they've gone and really shown that they can beat everybody. Um, but from what I've seen, I know Tennessee hasn't played the craziest out of conference yet, but Tennessee's look great on paper or has looked great on the field. Um, I would have said TCU before this weekend, but it wasn't the Jayhawks uh, weekend to shine. But um, give me Duke, man. I, I think from an eye test standpoint, I think they've gone and played some really difficult out of conference team. I'll take the Blue Devils. It, it's going to be really interesting. Cool. You know what's really cool? I didn't even say LSU into my top five. They could easily be in there too. He didn't mention a word about Arkansas, Oregon State. So that's how scrambled and jumbled up that top three, top four range is. You can pick three, four teams, completely forget about another team who could very easily be in that conversation as well. So we're in a spot in the year right now where flip a coin and pick one. Yeah. I mean, it, college baseball has so much parody. Like one weekend, you can look awesome. And the next weekend, you can look like trash. Um, for example, the Texas Longhorns. Yeah. Texas comes out Friday night. Huge series in Lubbock. At Texas Tech is rolling. They're playing some of the best baseball we've seen all year. Just putting up 10-plus runs against everybody they're playing. And Texas comes in and puts up 22 runs after blowing three games in Houston. And uh, they win 22-8. to eight. They lose Saturday, like something like 7-2. to two. And they come back today. Uh, have an awesome comeback win against Texas Tech and take the series in Lubbock. Like, it doesn't matter what team it is. If you win a series in Lubbock, like, you're a good team. And, like, Texas, I mean, they go from one weekend shutting out Cal Poly for three games. Uh, they didn't give up a run to Cal Poly one weekend. Then they go into Houston, blow three games, lose them all, and then come back this week. And they, they also got stomped by Texas A&M on Tuesday in the midweek. But then they go and win two out of three in Lubbock. I mean, I think it's a solid week for Texas. So there's so much parity I mean, in this sport. So it's many a huge teams that, week for Texas, right? It's I mean, I, I hand up, I may have counted them out a little bit only because of the way they lost. But if you go back and look at that Houston team, they lose by two runs to LSU. Texas stayed on a game-winning home run in the ninth. They blow an eight-run lead to Vandy on Sunday. They're like two plays away from going, oh, we have two losses on the season. You know, like, and then they, they show up this weekend and we, we bragged on 34 consecutive scoreless innings. Dude, they scored 33 runs this weekend. They put up a 22 piece McNugget on Friday night against the Red Raiders. 22? Like, their offense has gone bonkers. Um, Porter Brown, the TCU transfer, he's been in Austin for two years now. He's hitting baseballs to different planets. He went 484 this weekend. That is so yeah. stupid. I couldn't hit a ball that far and then go hit it again that far. Like, what? They're dumb. Speaking, speaking of TCU or uh, Texas and Texas Tech transferred, not TCU. I don't know why. Ben, I can't believe we went this long without knowing Gavin Cash was a Longhorn. Yeah, I had no clue. 
I had no idea. I don't know how that like slipped through the, the cracks, but we talked about Texas being 0-3 after the Shriner. We said, wow, they could easily go 0-7 in this run. Mm-hmm. They went 2-2, two and two, and that's a great week. And, hey, you remember my guarantee? Guarantee? You guaranteed it? You guaranteed I guaranteed it. it. I guaranteed. <laughs> I said Texas will win two games this week, at least. Yeah. Guaranteed. And they did. They yeah. did. So, hey, good. speaking of another team, I want to give a shout-out real quick before we move on to whatever you have on your list over there. Speaking of team coming back and, like, m- making a return, if you will, Texas went bad weekend. They came back, showed everybody, hey, we are a good team. We just had a rough weekend. Santa Barbara. They lost two out of three against Campbell opening weekend. They came back, won a series Sac State, won a series out of Oregon, beat a Connecticut team, who I think it, they're three and nine, but I think they're much, much better than their three and nine record. So I think Santa Barbara is like, whoa, wait a minute, guys. Give give us a second. They're a good team, too. And they've come back and showed up. Um, yeah, so we, we kind of talked about it, maybe not last episode, but one of the most recent episodes. Santa Barbara hasn't had a field to play on. Like their their, their yeah. field situation is just so bad right now, so I think they're one of those teams that's going to get better as the season goes on. Like they're super talented. Like they should win most weekend series in the Big West. Um, but yeah, like Santa Barbara, the Gauchos are playing good ball right now. Um, and look, I think uh, I think mid majors in general. And when you look at the mid major landscape, this might be the best year that we've seen as a whole for mid majors because. Like, even when you go down the list, like, Kennesaw State just won two out of three at Kentucky. And we have them ranked, what, like 16th or 17th in our mid-major poll? Like, we we said it before the season. Every eight years, a mid-major wins the College World Series. And I know it's early. It's a big We're only four weeks into it. it. But, yep. like, it's shaping up to be like, okay, we should have one mid-major at least in Omaha – and if you get a mid-major in Omaha, whether it's a Dallas Baptist and East Carolina, Campbell, Coastal Carolina, UC Irvine, who's been playing some of the best baseball in the country, like if they get in Omaha, like they have a chance to win it. So absolutely, uh, that's what I'm saying is mid-majors as a whole. It, it looks like it's going to be a good year. Can I float something? I, I'm so glad y'all brought this up because I do think that mid-major baseball is like a direct indictment on the state of college baseball and the portal and like guys picking and choosing and, and a guy that might play at a power five and end up at a mid-major. I do think that this is the deepest that we've ever seen college baseball in general. Yep. I think players are getting better. I think programs are investing more money into it. I just think it's a better product. We talked about, a mid-major team winning every eight years. Ben, you, you made that tweet. I think that went bonkers, and it's so spot on. But I also was thinking it to myself, this is a couple weeks back, when you think about when Ole Miss won the national championship and they almost didn't get in, right? Yeah. Mississippi State, same boat. I think that the mid-major ranking, like there are so many good teams that might not even get in. They have to win their conference in order to show up. Then I'm like, oh, man, that's a dang shame. What if there was an NIT for college baseball? I, we've talked about that. Like, Have over you the guys past. brought that up before? Yeah. Because yeah, over the last couple of years, I just don't think enough people would care, to be honest. You don't think? I think most players on these teams would rather go play summer ball in the Coastal Plains League or wherever. All right. Well, Actually, I, let me make this very clear. As a, as a former mid-major player, I couldn't have cared less about it. Like, like uh, hand up. That's the honest God truth. But you know that there are coaches that are up y'all's tailpipes about these mid-major rankings that would love to go put their team on the map by going and playing in something like this. So I'm not even saying like a, like an NIT with like six, like a field of 64. I'm talking like, what if you almost did it like Junction Juco Bandit style? You got 16 to 24. You put them on one site. And you just like let yo, this is like AAU travel ball status at like East Con back in the day, and let them just tear each other's heads off for a weekend or you know, or a full week. Um, I think there'd be enough coaches that'd be like, hell yeah, let's go do the damn thing. Yeah, but coaches got to get on the road to recruit, send their players off the summer ball, and they got to get on the recruiting trail and catch to get all the high schoolers playing. So it's like, that's fair. yeah, it's like it's like in the weird, weird, weird dynamic. What I what I think would work though, because I say it wouldn't work in NIT because I remember in like when I was playing at Mercer and we were the number, like we won the regular season SOCON, 
Like we probably should have, we were way more talented than every other team. Like we should have played in a regional after losing the championship game one year to Western Carolina. Like I was gutted. Like I didn't want to play any more baseball. Same thing my senior year. Like graduation was the week before go play the conference tournament. You don't win it. You're just gutted. Like you just don't want to play any more games with that team. You want to move on, whatever. But I'll tell you what would work like a play in tournament. You get a couple like conference, like teams that won their regular season conference lose in the conference tournament. Like they're the best team in that conference. They go and play against some bubble teams from the SEC, ACC, whatever. Um, and maybe you take, I don't know, 16 teams, eight, like power five, eight mid majors, and they play like a, a double elimination style tournament or something to play. I don't know the exact format, but I think there could be a play in tournament for those bubble teams. Well, it's just but there's yeah. a reason why they don't have them because that means you have to push back regional another week because these pitchers got to start in this play in tournament. You can't, it's not like basketball. You play on a Wednesday no, night. Play, listen, play Friday. Listen, Friday. I've always thought that. Like, there should be a disadvantage for these bubble teams once the tournament starts. So you yeah. can play a midweek a midweek style Tuesday game for these, like, whatever, four bubble teams and four maybe uh, then conference. That takes, away, that takes away from the highest potential super competitive regional. Because now one team is a pitch, basically two, a pitcher short, an ace short. No, but that's what I'm saying. There should be there should be a disadvantage for those teams. That's what I'm saying. There should be a regional with a team at a disadvantage. What? I don't want to watch a regional with one team already at a disadvantage. Well, I mean, they barely got in the tournament anyways. Well, I would rather them come into the tournament at full stream. So you don't want to play in tournament at all. No, I love it. Well, I, I but I mean, basketball's got. I know it's very different, like the play-in games. But even if you incentivized it in a way where you said, "Hey, hey, maybe if you go in, like, like if you did four mid majors versus four power five teams, like it earned like a second automatic automatic qualify for like a regular season champion." Like when you look at the CAA this year, where it's like going to be Campbell, Northeastern, Wilmington, Cal Charles, and all like biting each other's heads off to get in, like. They're not necessarily a guaranteed to team league. I know they were but last that's year. That's what that conference tournament for is that's your play in. Yeah, but then what like why even play the regular season then if you're those? Yeah, players? that's that's because kind of my point. You have a chance to get in that yeah. large with the regular season. I mean, yeah, but like at the end of the day, it's an uphill battle. Like it's yeah, yeah, I, I think it those leagues like deserve three or four teams. But okay. you know. I mean, for example, a couple of years ago, Ball State had a guy throwing a hundred on Friday night. Okay, shove it up like that. We say Ball State throws that guy on Tuesday, they win it, and now they're in a regional. I don't want to watch Ball State anymore because he's not, he, they don't have a guy that can upset LSU, for example, at Alex Box with their bona fide stud on the mound. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Now the Ball State throwing their number two guy, they get their shit kicked in, and then they go, oh, and two and barbecue, they're out of the regional. When we could have watched a much better product yeah. if that All guy right. Friday night again. All right, here's, here's how we fix it. Both teams have to agree to pitch their midweek starter. <laughs> yes. All in. Yes. Handshake deal. We're both going to throw our midweek guys. No, 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 no. Even better, even better. All right, so if, if Mercer and Charleston Southern are playing each other in the play-in game, they get to pick each other's starter. Like, hey, I get to yeah. go down your Rolodex. I get to see who's healthy. I get to pick your starter for the game. Now, now we're just getting out of control here. I love the passion. I love the enthusiasm about this, but get the shit out of here. <laughs> yeah um anyways so i got a bunch of topics here do you want to run through a few and then we can kind of pick which one we want to go to yeah go ahead. all right so i have jack caglione kyle debarge uh uc irvine smacks the baseball i have miami virginia series southern miss louisiana tech missouri very bad uh coastal carolina rakes Charlie Condon, triple crown question mark? OU sweeps. Is UCF the real deal? What do we want to go with? All right, let's start. I'll start with one and Jack picks the next one. I love it. All right. I'm gonna go, damn, which one do I want to pick? I have I, I like a lot of those. All right, I'll let's go, go Miami. Pick. Let's go Miami. You're a Miami guy. Uh I'm not I'm not I'm not impressed because the hitting has always been in Miami. The, my, the hitting will never be a problem in Miami. It's the pitching. We are giving up so many runs when we shouldn't be. Virginia, is, I mean, they just came off a series where they were struggling. Again, um, UMass, 
Yeah. It was one of those Northeastern it schools. Is it with the Minutemen? Yeah, it was Minutemen. Yeah. Minute yep. All right. So, like, for example, maybe Virginia's not that great. Miami's giving up 11 runs, 14 runs all weekend. They're making massive comebacks. One guy hits a fly ball that doesn't go out. Guy catches it. That comeback is short. They go up one and two, maybe get swept this weekend. So I'm not I'm not buying this big series win for the for the hurricane. I, I'm buying it because after losing a series against Florida and then getting down early to like big early to Virginia, like How Miami showed me a lot of fight. And listen, they're a young team. Like even Blake Sear, who's like their quote unquote okay. leader, he's a sophomore. And like you got Daniel Cuvet just raking baseball. So this is a type of team that you don't want to play in June. Like, they're going to keep getting better. Like, the pitching staff, like, they, they've been bad. But at the same time, if you're scoring 15 runs a game, like, you're going to win more games than you lose. So I'm buying this Miami team. I think they're fun to watch. I actually tuned in quite a bit when I saw them uh, slowly creeping back for the comeback on Saturday. And then I watched most of the game today where they came back and took the lead. They ended up blowing it. But, like, I think this Miami team is exciting. That's just my opinion. They're exciting, but they can't pitch. Well, if they get a couple transfers, uh, probably from the Ivy League next year. (laughs) We hired. Hey, I'll say something about 2024. I and I because I watched that series. I I, hand up. I underestimated the ACC as a whole. I I think the ACC is far deeper than I imagined. People say this every year. People underestimate the ACC every damn year, and I'm like, guy. Stop focusing all on the SEC. The ACC is good every yeah. single year. Yeah, because to me, I thought it was like it was a one, maybe two team race. It, like, and I said two team after I saw Duke opening weekend, where I was like, these guys are the fucking twenty. They're the twenty nine Yankees. Uh, but like, I, I, I definitely underestimate them. I, I think it's the depth that you kind of forget about. Uh, but man, they raked that weekend. And I know Coral Gables is kind of a band box a little bit, but. Uh, Virginia, it's really not well. though. Really, it depends which way the wind's blowing. It, they always have just thirty mile an hour winds every right. game. That Cuvee kid yeah. is crazy though. Like he's crazy, mm-hmm. and, and like I feel like there's not a ton of love towards like at that end because I, I, it's almost getting lost in their offense and numbers. But he rakes, man. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Speaking of ACC rakes, this is not something I had on my bullet points, but the NC State Boston College game was crazy today. Uh, there was 11 total homers hit. Boston College hit seven, uh, and they lost the game. But NC State's bullpen was shaky towards the end. Uh, that was just a fun game I watched earlier today. Uh, NC State ended up winning the series. But, yeah, Boston College is not bad either. They looked all right. I know they swept, but whatever. Um, anyways, uh, let's, let's, talk about, let's talk about Jack Caglione here. Wait, because it's wait Jack, let Jack pick a topic. Jack, are we good with Jack Caglione? So my topic was going to be – it was going to be a, a nice good old-fashioned collaboration. It was actually going to be Jack Cags and Charlie Condon. Let's 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 blend let's the two blend together. together. But go ahead and start with Cags because I think you're – go ahead and put a pin on Condon going triple crown because I think we're simultaneously watching one of the best college baseball players of all time, like realistically, and then Charlie Condon putting on like a Brent Rooker S season. Yes. Wow. Great comparison. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk about Jack Caglione because everybody likes to make fun of Florida. I'm one of those guys as well. Uh, when I came out with my preseason uh, field of 64, I did have Florida as a two seed because I thought they were going to take a big step back, losing some like very key ace type pitchers that they lost like last season. I did not have Jack Caglione stepping up as a pitcher this year, like he has. I mean, he has been borderline unhittable on Sundays, which is an automatic win, it feels like, for the Gators. Um, Oh, yeah, and he's hitting like 473. Plus, guys, like, teams are just not pitching to him. They are pitching around him. Um, And I I came out with a tweet today on on Twitter. I think Jack Caglione might go down as, like, one of the greatest college baseball players, if not the greatest, of our generation. And when I say our generation, I mean the BB Core era um, since 2010. You because think he's already that much better than Brendan McKay? Yes. Yeah. A hundred percent. He's doing things that Brendan McKay wishes he could do. Like, that's the best way to put it. Um, I mean, By not only way. does he have the BB Core home run record, 
Um, he also throws 98 to 101 from the left side and has given up, I think, 13 hits in like 32 innings this year. I mean, his numbers are stupid so far. Did you take 30 and he's got like he's only had 15 innings. Really? 15 inning, five hit, three round, a walk, 27K. So get the walks down a little bit closer to the three to one ratio rather than the two to one ratio. He only has 15 innings this year? Yeah, he six again today, he right? Three again. He picked three against Columbia, six against Miami, six against St. Mary. This is week four, though. He, did he, not he, pitch? Didn't, he didn't pitch opening weekend. Oh, shit. Oh, because they only played the one game. Because they only played the oh, one game. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so his walks need to come down a little bit. But other than that, the, guy, the guys look great so far. Looks great. Wow, that was a big <laughs> swing of this on my part. I thought he threw way more than 15 innings this year. Don't worry. I swing in a miss weekly. Actually, nightly, I swing in a miss. <laughs> <laughs> they call me the Riz God. I don't know what for. I swing and miss more than I Riz. <laughs> that even I mean, makes sense. Yeah, no, no, you didn't say air ball. You you said swing and miss. So we're at least we're in the right venue. We're good, bro. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Brendan McKay was a great comp though because I, Brendan McKay wishes he could do those things, but like Brendan McKay was like a craftsman on the mound. He's ninety three, ninety four. I mean, he was mid. what ninety ninety four. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So I said 93, 94, like sink, like a slider. He's really good. Jack Cags with a size 17 shoes, just letting it hang, like making yeah. this look so easy. Dude, his quad, like, his quad. Yes, he does. Filling up those pants a little more than they need to be filling them up because, you know, there's some threads that are already starting to come off there. Yeah. And then that home run, he had a tonight, two inches off the plate at the knee, just parked it out of right center. I'm like, dude, how is this guy doing this? I was just about to mention that. That home run he hit where the ball was off the plate on the outside part, and he pulls it to right center on a line. Oh, like, line. On a damn line. He swings, for someone that big, he swings so wildly aggressively hard, but it's like it's it's organized chaos. It's all within, like, plane, and mm-hmm. everything is just so, like, fluid. He, he's right. really stupid. Rank, rank. These are the – First three I have off the top of my head. Lefty starter, two-way player, A.J. Reed, Brendan McKay, and Jack Cagg. Did Jack clear? I mean, A.J. Reed is not even close to Cagg. But Well, I mean, A.J. Reed, I think, went 12-0 and 0 or something his junior year and was a first-round draft. 93, no. 95? I have a bad taste with A.J. Reed in my mouth because he was an Astros first-round draft pick. He sucked. He was never any good. So, I mean, that hurts. But – I just think if Cags has a year similar to what he had last year, uh, plus just better on the mound, I don't know if there's anybody that could even – Yeah, I don't think there's anybody that's even close to him. But that was just something I wanted to bring up. Um, But let's talk about Charlie Condon now. I mean, he's hitting 565, 12 homers, 25 RBIs, and that that number should be higher. But when there's people on base, teams are just not pitching to him. I, dude, I think he is the most like he is the most MLB ready hitter I've seen it's since like I mean Dylan Cruz was up there too. Uh Wyatt Langford, like the both of those guys are gonna play major leagues this season. Um I have a take but, for you. Condon swing is way more suave and like ooze, like ooze is like damn that's smooth than Dylan Cruz's swing. Oh I think they're both pretty similar. Like they're uh, both comfortable. Uh, Condon a little more upright, a little more extension. Like, like just you know what I'm saying? Like more suave swing. Where you're just like, yeah. Man, he's also like, like what four or five inches taller. Yeah, so maybe that's so just a bigger, just a prettier all around picture to watch when he extends on when he gets a hold of one. I've got. I pulled something up because from a third base, like that corner infield spot, like the numbers and what he's doing right now is very reminiscent of what happened in 2013. 329, 31 homers, 62 RBIs. That was Chris Bryant. He's going to fucking blow by those numbers. Like he's going to blow by them. So is that like his player comp, Chris Bryant? Because I could see it. That was what I – I mean, it's a totally different stance. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, it's it's spot on. Like to me. Two or three weeks ago, I said Ben was talking about Charlie Kahn doing some player comp, and I was like, Chris Bryant. And he goes, no, 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 no. And I was like, dude, yeah, I think so. 
He he was my I, guy I think early he's more on. Brent Rooker, to be honest, taller, upright swing, hot corner defender can play the position and can hit with power and average. Like I mean, I think Chris Bryant's a perfect comp for Condon. If if Char- if Charlie Condon could play center field, he would be a unanimous number one overall pick as of right now. I mean, he is a third baseman, left fielder. I think they put him in center field uh, for a game against Northern Colorado for a couple innings, but. Like, he's just got the MLB-ready swing. Like, he's got the approach. I'm curious to see how SEC teams pitch to him and to see if, like, they're going to make a slate out for it or somebody else beat them instead of Condon. But, like, he's just the most interesting guy in college baseball to me right now because he hit 25 homers last year as a redshirt freshman. Like, this year he's on pace to shatter that. He's on pace to get over 30. Uh, Yo, I'm curious. I want to see what he does this year. Here, more on that comp. Charlie Con is 6'6", 216, right? It's Chris Bryant. Chris Bryant, 6'5", 215. Yeah. Wow. The, the, stance, the stance is very different. Obviously, Chris Bryant is very, like, poignant. But he was in hand a little more down and in. Yeah. But like from a from a physical stature standpoint, they are identical. Even watching them like leg out doubles. But this is where I wanted to collab it with you guys. I said rock paper scissors gun to your head. My team USA theory spot on. If I'm get because to me Bazan is a really good player, but right now it feels like a two dude race. If I give you today, Condon or Jack Cags, who are you going? With? How, is this how, Golden how Spikes the number one Spikes. overall pick? Golden Spikes, Golden Spikes, just Golden Spikes. Cag it's got to be Condon right now. What? I know. No, Cag the pitching. Yes, I know he's pitching, but he's not hitting over 500 with 12 jimmies, though. He's hitting 430. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. 70, also- 70 points worth of average did not counter out. 15 innings on the mound at 100 miles an hour. I'm, I, I'm a big eyeball test kind of guy, and nobody like nobody makes the game look easier than Charlie Condon right now. Now it could be competition based. Like he hasn't faced the best competition, but Charlie Condon makes the game look so much easier than anybody else in the country right now. Let's say I'm not saying he's yeah, Cag making it look easy on Sundays on the mound, something that Charlie Condon couldn't even dream of doing. Yeah, but does he get like does he get hurt because like we've just seen him do this now for almost two That's years? That's good. You point. know what I mean? Like, are we just like we're taking advantage of his greatness almost? Because I feel like that could happen a little bit with Cags. It's like we've just that, come to expect him to be able to do this. That's time. a good point. If he was doing, look, I think I think Jack Caglione should have won the Golden Spikes last year. You like I, that. I've come on record. I said it. Listen, Dylan Cruz and Paul Skeens, those guys, like they had every right to it as well. It was a tough race. Like JJ Weatherholt should have been like a finalist too, but he just wasn't because there was not enough spots. Wasn't um, enough. Which is why very unfortunate. People like Condon, people like Bazana, <laughs> some other guy <laughs> have to <coughs> excuse me. People have Sorry. to play uh play in the same era or same three year period as CAG. Because yeah. any other year, Condon, I would say the same thing, dude. Slam dunk. This guy should be your favorite. You you can't you can't be you can't be Jack Cag right now. Yeah. By the way, I'm not saying his full last name. He's going to completely avoid that whole thing. We're just going to stick with Cags here. Yeah, you've been suspended. Suspended from saying the way that you say. I mean, uh, I have an Italian. I have an Italian right in the room that would say his name correctly in Italian. (laughs) How would the kid kid say his own name? (laughs) Um, Italianoni. But that's that's a good storyline. And look, yeah, I think by the end of the year, that's how you say it. Calianoni. Everybody that keeps tweeting at me stuff saying it, it's wrong. Well, I, I've looked at the, the Florida media guide and Caglione is spelled out perfect. Like how it how we say it. So that's how he pronounces his name. That's the way we're gonna say it. Can we um, get Cag and Club Bromahan clear this once and for all? Hopefully. I can do that. Yeah, we'll we'll try. Wouldn't hurt to have them. Um, speaking of Georgia hitters, um, never mind. We won't go down that road. Let, let's talk about. Now I'm curious. Now, Southern now, now I'm curious. What road do you not want to go down here, boy? Well, I was just going to say Drew Burris hit his 10th homer, but it was really his 11th homer. Uh, but that one suspended game against Georgia didn't count yet. But he's still raking. Like, 
Georgia Tech looked good against Youngstown State. They uh, Youngstown State's bad, but anyway, all right, that's, that's not a road that I would. That's what. <laughs> that's what well, I no, said. the road I was going to go down was like Daniel Cuvey from from Miami, Drew Burris, Georgia Tech, like two of the best freshmen in the nation. But there's about five freshmen I can name that uh, could all battle for freshman of the year. We'll wait. We'll wait and save that for a little bit. Yep. Uh, dude, I want to just give a shout out to Kyle DeBarge from Louisiana. What a big time moment! Big time players come out in big time moments, down to their final strike against in-state rival Tulane. Um, Two-two count. Kyle DeBarge, clearly the best player on this Louisiana Raging Cajuns team. I mean, he hit the ball, and I've never seen somebody with two outs and two strikes down by two runs um, pimp a homer. But he like he got it. Like usually in those situations. Like your your mind's not focusing on like, am I gonna pimp a homer if I hit it? Like he hits it, knows it's gone off the bat. Louisiana wins the series. Uh, Raging Cajuns going nuts. Just a big time moment for him. And uh, yeah, and I, I know Tulane and Louisiana are big time rivals too. So it was a, it was a cool thing to see when it happened. Yeah, that was I, a, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say that was a massive costume contest too. The beautiful oh. teal, Some raising cages with the crispy red. Oh, I'm in the monarch on the back. It was that was big time. I'm telling you right now, I will continue to keep doing it until the day they send me one. I want a Sunday red Cajun jersey. I don't care if I have to pay a hundred bucks. Send me one. <laughs> send me one. Put eleven point seven on the back. I don't care what all you have to do there. I will send you a hundred dollars. I just want one of those jerseys, just to have it, just to say I own one. You should stick yeah. that, man. You should become the jersey guy. I feel like we could easily stockpile you up with jerseys, dude. There's enough coaches that would love to come in the club that I think would take care of you. Maybe. Yeah. All right, Ben. I think so. You listed your list of topics. How would Tro- the Troy Trojans not one of them? Well, I have. So I have this whole uh, state of Alabama versus the Big Ten. Uh, I, I didn't say it. I was going to save it for last, but let's just go ahead and talk about it. So we got. Three schools from the state of Alabama facing off against Big Ten schools. And the state of Alabama mid-majors, they two of the three teams won the series. So you had South Alabama playing three games uh, at Nebraska. You had Jacksonville State playing three games against Iowa. And then you had Troy playing three games at Indiana. And... I wish I would have thought of this storyline before it happened because we could have had fun with it uh, last week's podcast, but I just noticed it today. But how cool is that? Um, Troy goes to Indiana, splits a doubleheader today, but they also win uh, on on Saturday to win the series. So big bounce back for Jack's uh, favorite team, his Omaha contender. So, Jack, Dude, let's talk about How many about favorite Troy. teams does Homeboy have over here? How many favorite teams do you have? Uh, I don't know what you do at Pen Talk, but Pencil Talk's a ride or die for its people. Oh, baby, you want to bring it up? <laughs> the minute that you walk into Club Broma, you're getting a ride or die guy. Oh, I wow. rode just like that for the Govs and Austin P this weekend, who were just one pitch away from winning down at Auburn. Are you Sharpie, Sharpie Talk? Are I'm Sharpie, Sharpie Talk. talk? I brought a Sharpie episode. out. Rest of the episode. I don't even have my in. Lo siento. And, um, uh, yeah, we're going to get into that. But I, I had a couple of shout-outs that I wanted to touch, but I was going to wait till the end to really hit an exclamation mark. Demetri was so mad at Pencil Talk, and he was is standing on Pen Talk. I had to fight for my receipts with Troy going down there and getting a big-time dub and said, freaking Indiana on the graphic, ride or die for the boys. Um, all kidding aside, though, maybe uh, no, I know no, no, that – I want you to kid. I want you to come at me. Come at me with everything you have. No, no, no. This is me standing on business and talking about how damn good the Cherry Trojans are. They got an All-American in the outfield that's gotten off to a little bit of a slower start. The nickname Sugar Shane, better than Lord Tubbington in my opinion. Sugar Shane goes two Yahtzees today and goes 474 for a three-run Jimmy to beat Indiana. Sugar Shane, there's your player of the weekend. Hope. Let me make something very clear here. I was high, high on Troy. High pitch. I was high on Troy before you even knew who the Trojans were. Mm. I was high on Troy last year when we were handing out Thanksgiving dinner. When we were getting Christmas presents, I was high on the Troy Trojans. 
So that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Can, can can this clear. Come to an agreement yeah. here. Yes. All right. Hey, hey, I, I've got zero. You also all picked Indiana with hesitancy last week because you knew that Troy, they just had come off an ugly weekend, right? Like in the, the close Alabama game. We all knew that they were due for a bounce back. That had more to do with Troy and less to do with Indiana. I still think the Hoosiers are, I, I say Dark Horse, I still think they win the Big Ten. But that was all about Troy this weekend. With Will the Meat Man Butcher is still absolutely raking in the four hole. Cole Myers is still playing an unreal center field. They've got one of the deeper lineups uh, in the Sun Belt and in the country as a whole. But uh, I know that I uh, I glaze often. But that was a big time series win for the boys. I want to add one more thing about Troy. So when you think of mid major that want to slam dunk, no if and or buts or question mark about getting in that large bid. I get it. Fun belt. If you're in the top two or three range, you're probably getting into the tournament no matter what. Yeah. But a team like Troy, for example. SIU, Edwardsville, uh, Harvard, Kent State, Northwestern State. They're doing themselves zero favor to the committee saying, hey, we scheduled one, two hard series. They lose the series. By the way, I can't take myself seriously with this damn thing on my head. <laughs> <laughs> Keep seeing this thing shake in front of me. Uh, they lose that series in Northwestern State. You might as well have some big time power five school on your schedule right there. You lose that series, you get one of them. You're okay, but now the committee's going to look at their schedule and be like, "You didn't play shit. You lost one of these series. Now you really got to win the big, the, the Sun Belt or get top two, top three to get postseason that large." So that's why I'm worried. Like they went on the road to Indiana, good for them, but when it comes to the committee, they're going to nitpick that 64 and 65th team if you don't yeah. take care of business in the Sun Belt, which is kind of pissing me off. That Troy, maybe they couldn't schedule anything better, but just looking at it, that's the stuff that scares me when we get to May. Yeah, I, I think Troy will be fine. Uh, I want to first say, Dimitri, you did Jack dirty by putting Indiana on that graphic because he clearly picked Troy. Oh, I called you out on Thursday. I, I'm the graphic guy. Yeah. I fuck you up all the time. Yeah, the <laughs> Troy main account came inter- after us. Inter- yeah, um, it did. It did. <laughs> but I think this Troy, Troy team. I think this Troy team will be fine in Sun Belt play. Uh, the but bottom imagine, of the Sun Belt. Imagine. The bottom of the Sun Belt is not is not very competitive like they should sweep some of those bottom teams and like you're right if you finish top three or four in the Sun Belt like you're probably going to get in the tournament I think it's a four or five big league but but think of that that it what if scenario someone gets hurt for three weeks someone they go through a little rut in Sun Belt play and now they're fighting for that four or five range they don't have a marquee massive series they have Indiana but I don't think I, I hope Indiana turns out to be a big series win because then it'll help them get in the tournament but stuff like that scares me and we see it every year a great mid-major team had an unbelievable year. They just get snubbed because of these first four weeks of the season. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a concern, I would Campbell say. Campbell won 55 damn games in 2013 and didn't get in. It did. That was fun. Yeah. Um, it, it, but uh, so what were the other – oh, so South Alabama wins Friday night against Nebraska. And, uh, dude, they looked really good. Like the South Alabama on Friday night, they're going to win a lot of Friday night games. Uh, they lose a couple games, but I think Nebraska is going to be – Nebraska is probably my new favorite to win the Big Ten. Like I, I do so. think that they're a complete team. Uh, they win games in like a scrappy a scrappy way. Um, no like superstars in the lineup. Like there's not anybody in the lineup that you're like, this is a top five round pick. Uh, you know, because you got like Devin Taylor uh, for Indiana, who's like a legitimate possible first round pick this year. Um Nebraska doesn't have any guys like that, but they got one through nine, like good offensive players, and they can beat you in different ways. So even though South Alabama lost two out of three, winning that Friday Friday night game, Friday night game, I think means a lot to uh, to myself and like other teams in the Sun Belt. They're going to be a tough tough out on Fridays. Um, and then Jacksonville can State. Add, can I add to South Alabama real quick? Yeah, they're doing well right now. Correct. Yeah. Hitting well, doing everything. Will Turner is yet to heat up yet. I know. He's hitting He's a stud, too. He's hitting 236 with three doubles and four homers, slugging 500. So wait until that guy to get going. This is a good South Alabama lineup, a really good South Alabama lineup. Yep. And then uh, everybody's darling, the Iowa Hawkeyes preseason. They're struggling, dude. They're 6-8. and eight. They just lost a weekend series to Jacksonville State after getting swept in that Jacksonville tournament 
and then losing two out of three against Ole Miss. Uh, they have real bullpen issues, and the offense just hasn't clicked for them this year at the right time. So even though Jacksonville State's a good program, like they'll compete in the A-Sun, uh, the, I don't know. I think there's a lot of concerns with this Iowa team. And panic button, smash it. Smash <laughs> the shit out of that panic button. I'm worried. No, I, I, I'm worried too because people – preseason, everybody was talking about how like Brody Brecht and, and, and Marcus Morgan and these guys were going to lead them to a Big Ten championship and possibly host a regional. Those guys don't throw enough innings. Like It's not like Brody Brecht's going out there and throwing – you know, eight scoreless. Here we go. Brody Breck, 19, four starts, 19 innings. So what is that? Less than five five innings a start? Yeah. Well, That's he, not good. That's not his, good start, his first start, he was pitching really well this past weekend, but the game got called because of rain. I didn't see that. Yeah. All right. Uh, Cade Obermuller, four start, 18 innings. Marcus Morgan, Three starts, 13 innings. I need more innings from those three guys. I need much more innings. Seven ERA. And then Brody Breck and Obermuller look good. Oh, my God. 42 K in 19 innings. Brody <laughs> Breck. Um, I know. It's crazy. His numbers are crazy. But I just need to see more innings because they're, they're bullpen, their bullpen obviously is showing us they're not good enough to hold them when these guys come out of the game. So maybe when the weather warms up and – where are they? Des Moines, Iowa, or Iowa City? Iowa City. Iowa All City. right, yeah. If, when it warms up, maybe they'll be okay. But yeah, they, I'm worried. All right, so I want to put you boys on the spot because you did. I clipped it and I, I posted it earlier today. Outside of the Troy love and fandom, you said that this was a huge weekend. There were a couple big time moments for if the Sun Belt wanted to prove they were better to the Big Ten this would be the weekend to do it. Nebraska takes care of business. And I do think after they went and took care of business and swept in Charleston, they look better again later in the weekend as well. I think they are going to be a team to contend, but I think that, and I, I like Jacksonville state. I, I think their coach is really good. A guy like Brooks Brown was a stud there. Um, but I was struggling. I think it says more about Iowa this weekend. How do you feel? I like Sunbelt versus big 10. Where do you stand? I mean, I think you overall I think better. Demetrius yeah, no. said it, but Ben was kind of back and forth. He thought the Big Ten was going to be better this year. Look, I think the Big Ten's fine. Uh, the Sun Belt, they just – the top tier of the Sun Belt's way better than the top yeah. tier of the Big Ten. Yeah. Now, everybody forgets about, like, the bottom The bottom part of the Sun Belt's not that great. Um, okay. I mean, okay, would you, would you stack up – how would you stack up a team like, I don't know, Texas State – I mean, okay, Texas State not on the bottom. Okay, Georgia State. Old Dominion, Arkansas State, Louisiana Monroe, Marshall. I think they can compete with the Minnesota every weekend. Easy. That's fair. Yeah, like the Minnesotas, Purdue's. um, Let's see. Who's the Rutgers? But, but like, Rutgers and Maryland are solid programs. Michigan. Rutgers and Maryland, Maryland, no. Michigan kind of held their own a little bit with Coastal. Here you go. Here you go. Michigan State. Minnesota, Northwestern, Ohio State, Penn State, Purdue, those teams can compete with them any weekend. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, look, the Sun Belt's a better conference. That's fair. Yeah, I don't I don't really know if I have an opinion I agree. either way. I just think I think I think Ben's spot on like the top tier of the, of the Sun Belt is really good. Yeah. Whereas whereas the bottom half isn't probably comparable with you know, the bottom half, like you talk about Penn State. Penn State's got Adam Cesare, who was a stud left fielder for Wake Forest last year. He's right in the middle of that lineup hitting over 300. So you forget that there are big-time players at those programs. So um, I do have a hot take. I have it written down. The App State fall leaving picture that goes viral every year, right? I hate that picture. I hate that I picture know you so do. much. Can I add a new one that's coming, and it's going to be used every weekend year-round? Yeah, what is it? Marshall home run light shows. Oh. <laughs> it's coming. Every <laughs> homer, it's getting posted everywhere. It's nuts. These guys are literally going to be like sick home run show from Marshall. <laughs> so cool. And I think, honest to God, Marshall has built a beautiful ballpark. They invested in their program. Shout out to the Thundering Herd for investing in the college baseball. Like, they are going to draw bigger and better players because of it. They have guys running around the bases in the dark, though. Like they're gonna need glow in the dark black. here. If yeah. I'm an umpire, if I'm an umpire, said, buddy, you just missed that base. You're out. <laughs> <laughs> 
It is going to go. It's They go viral every weekend. It is super cool. Shout out to Marshall for making it happen. But it is going to be like, it's going to be overused like the App State picture. I can feel it. The, dude, I, I despise of those baseball accounts. I, I think the <laughs> one that you're talking about, it's baseball quotes baseball. or whatever. There's like, there's like three or four of them that just like circulate the same videos that are like years and years old. They just drive me nuts. Nuts. <laughs> I hate those accounts, dude. Like, yeah, it, well, it, it, I'm not saying, hey, do do whatever you want to do, whatever you got to do, get your engagement farming up, whatever. But especially in a sport like college baseball, still trying to grow. When people just get on Twitter and see this video of snowy Louisville that happened two years ago, coming up on a Saturday in the middle of a new season, they think, oh my god, it's snowy in Louisville, and they're playing Michigan. No, they're not. Yeah. No, they, no, they're not. And it's just, it kind of annoys me because then now people think that Louisville and Michigan play this year in some snow game when that didn't happen. Yeah. No, I hate that stuff. I hate it. Um, I hate it almost as much as Missouri baseball. What's going on <laughs> in Mizzou, fellas? They might not win three games in the SEC. They might go two and 28. Hey, I wanted to say something before it's off topic, and this is usually what we do. This is our bread and butter. We hop and go forward, backward. Can Iowa pull an Ole Miss this year and just heat up at the end of the year? That's what I was trying to say before. I mean, yeah, yes. sure. Why not? Yeah, they Ole Miss could. Could. I, I'll tell you, yeah. They could do it, especially with their front end pitching. Like they could go beat anybody in a regional. So if they get in there, they can beat anybody the first two games. That's what I'm saying. So I think yeah. we should panic on Iowa, but I wouldn't sleep on them. I wouldn't just throw them away. Keep your eye out on them. I'll tell you who should panic, and that is the state of Missouri baseball. <laughs> Yeah, the Missouri is bad. Kick them, kick them out of the SEC, please. Send them to the Big 12. Send them back to the Big 12. Well, I mean, they finally had a good football year, and now their basketball team, I think, won less than two games in the SEC uh, for basketball. Their baseball team is going to probably do worse. Uh, it sucks, man. They sold out for a good football season, and uh, now, they're, now their baseball team is trash. Like, Trevor Austin is – you guys know the meme – of that, like, really nice car underneath, like, a patio of, like, a crappy yeah, house. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's, a yeah. Uh, it's not a McLaren. What is it? It's a, uh... yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's yeah, yeah. That, that's McLaren. Trevor Austin on, in the Missouri baseball program because he's a stud, like a Team USA oh, guy. Bugatti, it's a and Bugatti. That's what it is. A Bugatti, yeah, in that like crappy like trailer house or whatever. Um, I mean, he hit like four homers this weekend, but Missouri lost two games to Purdue Fort Wayne. Uh, dude, they're bad. They're not good at all. So I feel bad for all Missouri baseball fans. Hopefully they get more than three. Like if, if you're an SEC team, like Missouri has to be an automatic sweep. If you don't sweep line. Missouri, it's a lost series. Set the line. Do you think it's actually three and a half SEC wins this year? Yeah, I'd probably set it three and a half. Right now. I'll tell you right now. Let's do it right now. Missouri. I think we should make this an ongoing bid all year. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Three at Arkansas, zero. Okay. 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 Three at home versus Kentucky, one, half a one. one. We'll give them one. one. Three at Vanderbilt, sweep. Yep. Three at home versus Florida, sweep. One. Three at Georgia. One, one. They I give one. one. They get one with Florida at home, one. Florida will be cool. All right, all right. We're at two. Three at Georgia. One. One, three. Three no. at home. No. Ah. All right, they'll, three they'll out, get three one out. between Florida and Georgia. They'll get one between okay, Florida and Georgia. Two and a half. We'll go two and a half. All right. Three at home for Dallas Shield. None. Three uh, at Tennessee. None. Uh, three at home for South Carolina. Half. All right. Yeah. Three, yeah. Win. three at home for Auburn. Half. Yeah. They get one between Auburn and, and uh, whoever you just said before. South Carolina. South Carolina. Yeah. Between All Auburn right. and South Carolina, they'll get one. They'll go one and five. All right, so that's three and a half win. Three at Mississippi State. Half. One. Zero. So Zero. I think, I think the, the line should be four. Okay, yeah. four and a half. Four and a half. All right, All right. I'll give you over. Hey, honestly, like, let's take a time out here. Not the worst SEC schedule. Like, they have a pretty light SEC schedule. Yeah. I mean, no, they're getting they're getting all the good teams. I mean, they're getting LSU. They're getting Arkansas from the West. That's not easy. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. And they're getting Mississippi State on the road, and I think Mississippi State's going to be okay this year. 
Yeah, they'll be yeah. fine. I, look, I'm not. I'm going to have SEC win. I think they're going under. I would say under too, because if Missouri gets like one or two injuries, like they're done, done. <laughs> like they're they healthy. Well, they're they as healthy as could be, and they're not winning games. Four and twenty-three in the SEC. Jesus Christ, kick them out. No, it'd be four and twenty-six. They play 26, 30. thirty. Yeah, thirty. Four and twenty-six. All right, I'm going to take the over just in hopes of them flying the boy out. I'm going to take the over. I'm going to ride or die. I'm going to I'm going to learn the team. I'm going to study up. And they're right, going to what, if I said, what if I said five and a half? Yeah, I don't feel as confident about that number, to be honest with you. <laughs> Four and a half, yeah. five and a half is not it's pretty bad. It really is a big difference. That's a huge difference. About the hurry, dude. Enough air it's, the difference, it's the difference of making a bowl game and not. That's the difference yeah. between four and a half, five and a half wins. Um, but yeah, they're in trouble. Um, so we got two topics left that I want to maybe throw up against the wall, see if they stick. Uh the, the Southern Miss-Louisiana Tech series was fun to watch. Um, you couldn't watch it on Friday until about like the third or fourth inning because there was technical difficulties. But I want to give a shout-out to Southern Miss's offense. That finally showed up. Uh, I also want to say that there is a concern on Sundays for Southern Miss. Southern Miss plays terrible baseball on Sundays for some reason. Um, but Fridays and Saturdays, they look awesome. Uh, Billy Butler hit two of the furthest home runs I've ever seen at the Love Shack. Uh, one of them, I think, hit the top of the apartment building in left field. And he was a guy that was kind of running his mouth after that Mississippi State loss on Tuesday, saying that they're running around the field. Like, well, I don't even remember his exact quote, but he was just not happy with the way that Mississippi State their, won. Something about our World Series or something like that. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, dude, Southern Miss, like, they just keep winning series, dude. Like, they just keep winning series. And, uh, I, I mean, I think they're. I don't think they're as good as recent years. Recent years, but they're putting it together. Like Coach Oz has the boys putting it together. Um, Louisiana Tech showed me a lot of bounce back today. I think they won a high scoring game, like eighteen to eleven or something. Uh, they're a good team too. Like I think Louisiana Tech's going to be solid in the in Conference USA. Uh, they should be able to compete with Sam Houston and uh, Dallas Baptist for possibly a championship. I don't know yet, but. I think it says a lot about Southern Miss going on the road. We usually see them playing non-conference games at Southern Miss, go on the road and win a big series against a good team. So, shout out to the Golden Eagles. Yeah, yeah, they'll they'll, they'll keep winning. I mean, I don't really have much to say about them. They're good. They're they they're a program at this point. You just staple them up. They're going to be good every year. Yeah, I like that Dalton McIntyre kid. Yeah, I think he did he. I don't think he started at the beginning of the year. I think he started now 10 games, but he can run a little bit, which I feel like is not absent in that offense often, but like they're adding that element of being able to take bases against you. I think he's hitting close to 400 at the top of the lineup, but yeah. He, uh, well, Billy just, Butler, like, Billy Butler also didn't start a lot of the games early in the year. It was like Southern Miss was confused about having a power bat in their lineup. Because yeah. they haven't really had one in a long time, like probably since Matt Walner in like 2019. We haven't had a power, power bat. No, I'm talking about like just a – I know they've had good hitters yes. that have hit home runs. Yeah. But I'm talking about like a big, beefy, just like 450-foot bomb type of guy. Right who, who just graduated last year, Ben, and is now a graduate assistant on their team? Well, look, I know you're going to bring up a couple occasions, but <laughs> – No, 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 no. Who is the big lefty that was a Southern Miss for the last three years? You're going to make me answer that? Danny fucking Lynch. That's not a power bat. Okay. All right. All right. You win. All right. Let me make my point. I'm saying a big beefy guy that just hits bombs. Danny Southern Lynch Miss is not used to having that. That's my reasoning why he didn't start early like in the year. But he rakes. We saw, I just looked it up. He's got. He's only got 30, 33 at bats. He's got the four jimmies, but he's already slugging over seven thirty two. So it's like a banger bust type dude. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I'm with you. Well, what else do we got on your list, Ben? Or are we going mid um, It was about uh, about UCF. They go to Norman, Oklahoma, like I called, and get swept. Um, I like think I think that series. I think that series was a very tough, eye opening series for UCF. Like, hey, welcome to the Big Twelve. There's no mm -hmm. weekends off, but they competed. I mean, they they had a game that they could have won. On I think they played doubleheader Saturday and played today. 
Um, game one of the series, they were in it till the very end. They had to leave, blew it. Um, and, and you know how it goes. Once you, it, it, it's a hard weekend. It's not going to get easier as you get to Sunday. So I think for UCF, it's going to be a learning curve early. I think they're a good team. I think it's just hard when you don't have the depth of a Power 5 school. Yeah. You know who's it's, – it's funny looking at the Big 12 standings right now. Wait. Like, look at this shit going on behind me back here. I know, I see it. Someone's playing video games. But okay. uh, yeah, you have the, the Houston Cougars who swept Baylor, top of the standings with Oklahoma, uh, who, who swept UCF. And then you have, like, Kansas and Texas, 2-1, two 2-1. And one, two and one. It's – it's uh, and then uh, what's – Kansas State won two out of three against Cincinnati. So, uh, interesting Whoa. big standings right now. We'll see how they shape – I haven't won a game. Huh? I said Cincinnati was going to win less than three Big 12 games all year. They did win a game. They got their they first game. Which I think says more about Kansas State, who I was super high on at the beginning of the year, and they have played some of the wackiest baseball games. That game today, they're down to their last out, bottom nine, and they go two-run gym job, the force extras. Cincinnati. Same thing happens in the 11th. Like, they have – I don't know. They played some crazy baseball games. And if Kansas State can get it going, I know Tyson Neighbors is out right now, but – that was a weird, fun series. Cincinnati stinks, man. They stink, yeah. dude. So I Kansas don't know. State really needs Tyson Neighbors, though. Like it's a yeah. like they need him bad. Like someone to come yeah. in, close the door, seventh, eighth, ninth inning, win a ball game. Yeah. He is he's the indictment of like you can't really have a closer in college baseball because you just have to throw your best pitcher whenever you really need him. And he's that yeah. guy they don't have him right now. So it's like they don't have a guy to just go throw up contagious zeros where the rest of the staff will follow suit. Like he is that guy for Kansas State. They'll be fine. Um, but here's a here's a fun set. I know we're are we doing midweeks here next? Yeah, let's do midweeks. We're we're gonna close out the show with midweeks here. Can I can I offer up a quick 30 second fun like Rapid fire round brought to you by hopefully Hack Attack. Hack Attack, send us some money and we'll make you the proud sponsor of a lot of here we go 27, 28, 29, 30. Go hit it. Okay, I've got five players in five teams that I want to shout out this weekend that caught my eye. The shout out, no free shout out. Shout out to the bus and the boys for inspiring the idea. I've got 20 seconds now. We go, uh, Kyle DeBarge. We already talked about him. I mean, a home run that you dream of as you're a little kid. Lyle Miller Green of the Austin P. Govs, who's going viral right now. He gets this quick pitch, fastball up in the zone, 454 over the wall. Austin P. goes and steals a win. They should have won the series. Brian Arnett, 12 pitch, home run. I get a minute. BP's a minute. Brian Arnett of UNC Wilmington. UNC Wilmington getting no hit. And he hits a two-run homer in the bottom of the ninth to four extras. Wilmington gets a big win over St. Joe's. Um, we already talked about Bielinson at Duke. Uh, and then Sugar Shane at Troy, they get a big series win. My five teams, the two teams that had something to prove, we already talked about both of them. I felt like Texas had to go in and win, mostly so Ben didn't have to go pee his pants. Uh, someone just made an appearance behind you. Someone made an appearance behind me? Yeah, super hot girl. If you haven't been able to tell, this is not my normal aesthetic. No pencil talk flag here. Shout out to Natalie Spala. Um, the University of Houston goes and sweeps Baylor in their first ever Big 12 weekend set, and they've got dogs. Like, they win that game against the Raging Cajuns in Houston at the Astros College Classic, and to me that was kind of like the turning point where all of a sudden they're like, all right, they got the buy-in. Trey Jones hits the middle lineup. He's top 10 in homers, top 10 in stolen bases. He's really good. But I've got two teams for you guys outside of Troy in my final five in my rapid-fire round brought to you by Hack Attack as I'm nearing close to a minute. Thank you, Dimitri. Are you ready? Just sleep on Virginia Tech who has not played a very difficult schedule. They're 11 and three. They just swept and they've got Louisville next weekend. They've got a really like pretty light schedule that we're going to turn around in two weeks and go, Virginia Tech's like 20, 22 and six. Like they're like 30 and like eight. Like why does Virginia Tech have such a good record? Carson Martini, who's hitting in their four hole has got all right. Like he's a monster. Keep an eye on Virginia Tech. There, uh, there's something brewing in Blacksburg. This was a team two years ago, no super. Weren't very good last year. But DeMart has got the seventh highest batting average on the team. He had seven guys hitting 300. Keep an eye on Virginia Tech. And on the same side, on the West Coast, how about Cal? 
Cal 11 to three just swept UCLA. They've got kind of a shitty front half of UCLA or big Pac 12 conference play. I wrote this one down. Big wins against UConn. They sweep UConn. They beat K State early. I think they've got Southern Cal next week, who I think we've all kind of decided on, kind of stinks out loud. Uh, mm -hmm. Virginia Tech and UCLA in two weeks, we're going to go, how do they, they're 24 and six? Like, how did that happen? So those are my two fun teams. All right. Boom. Minute and a half. I suck. Two things. That was actually three damn minutes. It was no, 30. I started at minute 17. 1630 you started. No, 1730. No, 1630. So we're going to work on that. We're going to maybe we'll practice in Club Bromaha, a little rapid Chris Berman rapid yeah, fire. Yeah, you distracted me though with a girl walking in the room. That's not fair. <laughs> Don't blame it on me. That was like five, all of five seconds. So we'll work on that. We'll get better as the week goes on. Second thing, thank you for reminding me about Cal. That team is for real. I like Cal since the beginning. Go in and sweep UCLA. Well done. See, it nice. wasn't it? It was rapid fire, not so rapid fire. I got three rounds of BP in, so three minutes. I got no problem with that. I can just tinker as we move forward. We'll tinker. We'll tinker. Tinker. I think it was time. good. Good first uh, rapid fire round. We'll get better at it. But um, yeah, exactly. you guys want to preview the midweeks now and, and close out the show? Yep. It's been 10 minutes on the midweeks. Maybe right. an hour and a half episode. I'm struggling right now, dude. I'm like feeling my fever come back. I, I am, I'm struggling. So this might just be a you guys segment. All right. But there's a ton. Tuesday is gonna be loaded. I, I don't have it pulled up in front of me. Uh, if you want to share your screen at Warren Nolan, yeah. then we can do uh, it. We are ready. I've been ready for the past five minutes. We got Wake Forest at Coastal Carolina Springbrook Stadium, 6 p.m. And get your eyes oh, wait, locked. Let's on pause. That one. Wait. Let's make sure this pause. Who's on the call? Who's on the call? It's not pen talk, it's pencil talk, baby. Jack DeLongshaw, Sam Wiederhaft, on behalf of 11.7, we got a top 15 matchup in the country. Let's go. In the low country, right? Yeah, this is in Dirty Myrtle. Yeah, not low country. Hey, close. Oh, I, I was just throwing that out there. I would, So low That's country good. is not the um, the coastline of the Carolina? Eh. Just chuck down Buford. Dirty yeah. Myrtle's, you know, it's whatever. Why the Buford and not Beaufort? I don't know. Uh, but when yeah. you spell when you spell go Cajun, this the same thing. Yeah. Why is it knife and not knife? You know, the English because. language stinks. Oh, All right. shit. Six PM, Florida, Florida State in Gainesville. Great, great game. Kennesaw, Georgia Southern, good in state Georgia battle. Georgia Tech at Mercer. Keep your eye on that's a big upset alert one. I think that's a great one. Uh we've got East Carolina and UNCW, Miami go to FAU to return a favor. FAU took them down earlier in the year. Uh, hey, don't sleep on West Virginia at Marshall. That's going to be the highest beer sales uh, contest of Tuesday. <laughs> like, those two schools don't like each other. Fan bases don't like each other. Um, and they're both reckless. So, I'll be watching that game. I like it. That's a good one. Oral Robert having a bad year. Maybe they can turn it around with a win at Arkansas. Uh, what else do we got here? Oh, Missouri, Kansas. Can Kansas flip the coin and say we are the better baseball program in the uh, Missouri, Kansas area? Kansas City links those two states together, in my opinion. Um, Sam Houston at A&M. Keep your eye out. That's a great one right there. Alabama and Southern Myth. Holy shit, there's so many good ones. Indiana at Vanderbilt. Um Nebraska at Wichita, South Alabama at Mississippi State, Troy at Auburn. Like, my God. Oklahoma, oh, State, Oklahoma. TCU at Dallas Baptist. Yeah. Dude, I'm telling you, it is loaded on Tuesday. Wow. Wow. We got a lot of ball games. I'm not even going to look at Wednesday because that's enough. That's enough for five days' work. The, um, so, last week on Tuesday, we tried to pick – I don't know, something like 12 upsets, and we went 0-12. Uh, yeah. This week, we'll be I'm a little bit better. I'm not partaking in this. I'm so, Let's see. like, for me, like, a, a prime upset position would be, like, I could see Georgia State beating South Carolina. They're playing in North Augusta, neutral site. South Carolina is not going to want to be there. Like, they got SEC play coming up on the weekend. Georgia State, scrappy team. They usually play midweeks pretty well. I could see that upset happening. Uh, South Al same thing for South Alabama at Mississippi State. Playing in Biloxi, neutral site. South Alabama, I mean, it's probably closer to Biloxi, definitely closer to Biloxi than Starkville, 
at least I think. Um, but South Alabama just doesn't lose midweek games. Like that's something I've been tracking for like five years. They always just win big midweek games. So I can see South Alabama beating Mississippi State in Biloxi. Um, same thing for for Troy and Auburn. They're playing neutral site in Madison. Like Troy is going to upset Auburn. Like I can call it now. Like I think the Trojans are going to be pumped to be playing Auburn uh, the week before SEC play starts. Like that's a that's an upset in the making there as well. Are, are we going to talk about Sam Houston just that's sweeping fine. Texas yeah. State? Yeah. Sam Houston sweeping Texas State and then they get to go play undefeated A and M at Bluebell Park. I'm not saying that they're going to win the game, but like this is probably the best team A and M's played all year. So yeah. watch out for that. Um, Alabama Southern Miss is going to be fun to watch. Like there are two, a couple games like that. Like I don't even know if that's an upset. Like those lines are going to be like damn near pickums, right? Like TCU DBU are going to be damn near pickum too, right? Right. Like I. What do you guys think the line's going to be for TCU DBU? Because it's at DBU, right? I dude, yeah. To give yeah. DBU, I mean, to give, I mean, like DBU, like plus one thirty, maybe, right? I think it might be close to a pick to be honest. But yeah. don't forget, like TCU's got the guy in the midweeks, the lefty that throws gas and shoves. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I think TCU should be like a minus one fifteen favorite. Dallas Baptist a plus one hundred five or something like that. Yeah, I would say something like that. But I, I do think it's going to be a lot of SEC upsets this week in the midweek, uh, just because SEC plays coming up. Like, uh, yeah. who was Flor- who's Florida playing? I like. I just, well, they got Florida State, so like that, like that I mean, line. It's like, not really. I don't, yeah, Florida loves losing midweeks. The one that I like though. Because I think they've been playing really good baseball. Vanderbilt's been really, really good. They're really excited. I think Indiana absolutely goes and beats them. That'd probably be like a two forty guy, right? Yeah. Plus two forty. Yeah. I mean, Iowa, Georgia. That's a good game too. We didn't even talk about that. Is that a good game though? Is Iowa a good baseball team right now? <laughs> I think it's kind of a mix of both. Like everybody was high on Iowa preseason, low on Georgia. And Georgia's been good. Iowa's been bad. So, like, maybe a mix of uh, good team, oh, bad record, bad team, good record. I don't know. I will say this one before we're done. Rutgers has got two with North Carolina. I think it's a split. Rutgers is better than I think a lot of people think. Rutgers anyway, will win. Myself. Yeah, they split. I'm, I'm, I'm taking a peek at Wednesday's games just because I have to. I'm looking. They're terrible. Wednesday games. Anything that sticks out to me? Well, as Ben is looking at Wednesday game, thank you for tuning in. Um, another week of college baseball. I'm going to wrap this one up for myself um, and let have Ben have his final word. But thank you for tuning in. College baseball to the moon, like always. 11.7.com backslash shop. Go get some merch. And that's all I got for you. Oh, another thing. I had to buy my third 11.7 hat this morning because I've lost it. My second hat in the last three weeks. Um, flying off of my scooter. So, yeah, um, I've probably bought more merch for myself than some of you guys have out there. It is what it is. Yeah. Um, Louisiana, Louisiana Tech's Wednesday. That's pretty much the only Wednesday game that interests me. Um, but, dude, just think of it as marketing. There's people in San Diego that are just picking up these 11.7 hats. Yeah, yeah. there's two 11.7 hats in the streets now. My third one's mm-hmm. on the way. Wait, question before we go. Did you feel them fly off, or did you get to destination and realize they flew off? Um, so it was yesterday evening, <laughs> my time, I hook my hat on my scooter in the front. There's a little okay. hook. And okay. I was driving. I got there and I said, where the fuck is my hat? Gotcha. So I turned around, went back about four times. It was like a three-minute drive. Went back and forth. Okay. Couldn't find it. Somebody is wearing it. I love that. Great hat. Good. Great it's hat. Marketing. I love it. Some brand, baby. All right. Well, we'll end on that note. Peace Appreciate out. everybody for listening. Subscribe on uh What's this called? YouTube, uh, Apple, Spotify, wherever you listen to the podcast. Uh, we, we finished through the flu game. We're feeling better. Uh, everybody tune in to Jack Tuesday. Coastal Carolina hosting Wake Forest. He'll be on the call. That's a big one. But, Jack, go ahead and go eat your Panda Express, your $50 Panda Express. So excited. And uh, we'll hop off now. See you, everybody. I'm Jack.